Hey guys and welcome back to another one. Today we're going to continue where we left off last time with ESPM. We're going to go through use the same sensors we've set up as well and see if we can set up some automations within ESP Home itself. Um, it doesn't even need to be connected to a home assistant in order to trigger those automations. It'll all run on the ESP itself. Now you may be asking why we need to set up some automations within ESP itself without using home assistant. Well, there could be uh, multiple reasons uh, depending on your setup or the way you want to run it or maybe you want to set up this device that may not always have a good connection to your home assistant or you don't want to run a lot of automations in home assistance when it's something very simple you can run on the ESP itself for just some basic functionality. Um, but with that said, let's go in and take a look. There we go. So back where we left off last time, so we're in ESP Home, we still have that one ESP board that we've set up last time. And we do have the same functionality in here. So we have the humidity, the temperature, and also the status of the relay. So we can go through and turn it on and off with this button, not the theme. So we can go through and turn those on and off. And it reads us the temperature that we have on here as well. So in Home Assistant, if we go back to the edit option in here, we see we still have those two sensors in here. Now, in order to add some automation to some of the information, so in here, say for example, we want to add an automation to this relay, we need to give ESP Home an indication of what device they need to um, do something with. So what do I need to do with what device? So in this case, we give IDs to certain switches or information that we want to automate. So in this case, we just give it an ID and then we'll give it a name, say for example, it is a relay again. So re relay there. And now we've named it. So it's still a relay, but just as easy way for ESP Home to reference this specific device that we have named. Now on ESP Home's website, they do have quite some information on sending out automation, uh, setting up automations as well. So in here you can see that they have an identifier. They also have some um examples you can use so we can try and use an example that I have set up right here which is for a DHT so we can just go through and copy this information right here so we need a couple of things in here we can go through them as we get to this so on our uh, sensor sensor for the DHT remember we have an ID so we have identified like this is the relay and say for example we want to trigger this relay when it hits a certain temperature on the um, the board itself, we can go through and then add that as an automation. So say for example, on value range, which means just when it hits a specific value. So if it's above, and let's see what the current temperature is on this thing, just so I don't go through. So it's currently about uh, 22.6 degrees Celsius. So if we go through and say like, hey, if it goes above, 23 degrees Celsius, then it needs to turn on the switch with the identifier. So this one says humidifier, but obviously we call this one a relay. So what we want to do is if it goes above 23 degrees Celsius, we want to turn on the relay. And that is the name that we've given in this ID right here. We need to add an additional option as well. So with the uh, turn on relay, we also can go like, hey, if it goes below 22, for example, this is just an example so we can sort of quickly show how it works. It then needs to switch off that same relay again. Now, obviously you can set this up. Say for example, you have a chicken coop or something like that, that you need the fan to come on when the temperature is above or below a certain level. You can set it up right in ESP Home without needing to go through Home Assistant, setting up an automation and then adding an additional automation to your Home Assistant when it can all be run straight from within ESP Home. So let's go through and save and install that to see how that functions in our config. There we go. So that's uploaded and we have it showing us the temperatures. Remember, we set that to 23 degrees, then it should turn on that relay. And I'm not sure I tried to make sure that you guys can see this, but as you can see, the relay has power. We have the temperature sensor right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my hand over it. So we go over that uh, 23 degrees uh, trigger for it. And then once it goes above that, it should trigger that relay. 
So on my screen, you can see it's busy updating. So let's just wait for that to go above the 23 degrees and then it should trigger the relay on here as well. There we go. And as you can see, it turned on the relay because the temperature was above 23 degrees. So that's very basic. If the temperature is above 23, turn on your fan and then uh, turn off once it has hit the target temperature again. Now this could be anything like a heater or anything. Obviously, if you're running a heater, just please be careful on using the correct information or the correct relays that can handle something like that. Um, one thing to also keep in mind is if you add this into your home assistant, this automation is always going to be active. So if you have an automation in home assistant that triggers something else, it will be overwritten by the activity on this ESP. So whatever you're running in here, please make sure you're working in conjunction with this when you set up your automations in home assistant, or if you're turning on and off manually the switch or the uh, relay, it will get overwritten by this automation that we have added in here. So that's it for some a basic automation on this, but what if we want to add in a normal switch, for example? So right here, I have connected two wires. This is just going to um, a pin and ground um, that I connected to the ESP. And let's see if we can go in and add a switch or a button that we can trigger the relay as well from within ESP Home. Okay, so to add the button or the contact or uh, the type of switch, so it's going to depend. I don't want to say it's a switch, it's a binary sensor. Um, so that's what it's called in ESP Home. A binary sensor can be anything from a PIR sensor to a physical toggle switch that you have, or even a read switch that contact sensors that senses if something is open or closed. That's what we use a binary sensor for. It's basically just bridging to that pin to ground to say like, hey, this is connected and the connection is closed. So setting up a binary sensor, we did this in the past. So the code for this is pretty simple. We have to remember we don't have any binary sensors in here. We just have a sensor and a switch. So the switch is the relay. A binary sensor is the contact. And then the sensor is the DHT. So in here, I've already connected that red wires to uh, GPIO. So the platform is GPIO. It's connected to pin number 02, which is D4 on that uh, node MCU. The name, I'll just give it a door. So say, for example, it's a door sensor that you open and close. And then device class is just a way for Home Assistant to identify the type of device that this is. So that's a standard one. So let's just save and install this so I can just show you it as functioning like it should when you make contact with that switch. There we go. So that code has uploaded. So now if I connect these to remember this was D4 to ground. So I just connected one of the wires to the ground and then the other one to D4 or uh, GPIO2. If we connect this, as you can see, the door goes on and off, which is the states that we currently have in here. You can use the inverted as well. So if it is the wrong way around, you can invert that but now we do have those in there so the next step for us would be to make some modifications if we want to automate some of the information in this so we have the device clar uh, the device class so the next step is going to be like hey let's do some automation in here so similar to what we have in here but this is on a value range in this case this will be press and we do like if it gets pressed we do exactly the same as above. So the only difference is when this gets pressed or it closes the circuit, um, we can say that it needs to trigger the relay. So turn it on, for example. And that should be it. So unpress and it should trigger that relay. So hit save and install. So we can go through and install that. And then I'll show you how that works as well. There we go. So that has uploaded in here. So let's quickly, I'm going to move over to the ESP side itself on here real quick so we can see a bit better. So we have that door. So the current status is on or open, uh, depending on the way you've set it up. And like I said, you can invert it that the same way as the relay. And the relay status is currently off. So if we connect these now, nothing happens. But if we release them, it turns on that relay. 
as you can see, I know it's a bit hard to see that uh, relay triggering in the camera, but as you can see. So now you see what ha what's happening here is it's just staying on and nothing else is happening. We can trigger this and go on. Nothing else is happening. That's because we used a switch or just a single time event. So it's just going to trigger that once and that's it. Uh, if it's on, it's going to stay on. So instead of this being a turn on, we need to toggle it. So if we change this to toggle in here, so we just do toggle instead of just keeping it on because that's what's going to happen and update that real quick and see what happens now. Okay, so now that that code has updated, let's go back in here and see what happens if we toggle this now. So if we press it down, nothing happens. So it's just closed. But if we open it, it turns on that relay. Now, if we close it again, nothing happens again. But if we open it, it triggers it again. So how does that function? Well, this is normally set up, say, for example, you're wishing a temporary push button. In my case, I said it's a door or whatever, but that's normally the functionality for a temporary push button. So if you press the button and as soon as you release it, it'll turn on that device or toggle the devices. So for example, you have a wall switch or something that just has a single button that you press. That's how that toggles. However, if you're in a situation where you have a really long cable, you might, might be seeing some false positives where it triggers that device when nothing is actually happening or it's falsely triggering it, I would suggest we do a small change in the way we set up this automation. So in here, we see it's currently set to a on press event right here. Now, what I normally would recommend is instead of doing an on press, we do a on click. So it's the same functionality, but it's on click. And then we can add in some additional parameters in here as well. So let's see how that would look. So instead of using this, we update it to this instead. So now it's on click, on a click event, and then we say minimum length. So for how long it needs to be clicked before it will engage that. And if it's longer than a certain period, uh, the maximum amount of time that needs to be pressed, then it will toggle that relay. So the reasoning behind it is for those false positives, especially if you're using very long wire sometimes, or you have some weird interference or weird power to your ESP board, it can do some weird false positives sometimes where it just triggers without any specific reason, but it's so quick and you don't want that to trigger an automation. So normally we just do add in a filter, so to say. So it needs to be pressed for at least 60 milliseconds and then at the maximum length, I just added in 350 milliseconds. You'll probably not hold it for longer than that. That's what I found in my testing that has been working great. Um, so if we do just a normal click, it it'll hardly function. Uh, it'll be very hard and that'll trigger most of the false positives instead of you trying to click it. So that's why we do a minimum and a maximum length just to filter that out. So we can do that and install that real quick and it'll function almost exactly the same, but it just gives you a bit more leeway or room to play with and adjust the parameters a bit more to your liking. Now, obviously in my example, 60 milliseconds is very short. Even 350 milliseconds is a very short amount of time. Um, that's normally what I use for button switches. That's just a quick press and you go on because I've noticed a lot of times it is extremely quick on the press. So with a physical wire, it may be a bit slower to, to get to that response rate. So, so it may need to increase that timing in there. But if we go in here, as you can see, it doesn't trigger that relay that often unless I'm going really fast to trigger that relay. Now you can increase this to be more, so it allows you to press that for longer instead, which will, all we'll do is we'll just increase this time frame for the minimum length, we'll do like, hey, uh, or for the maximum length, uh, not the minimum length, the minimum length you can adjust, but for the maximum length you can increase that to say 950 milliseconds, so at least for one second, and hit the install button for that. So that code has uploaded, so let's see if that works a bit better now. There we go. So as you can see, I just increased the uh, amount of time this button can be pressed and that fixed that issue.
that we had so that's going to be it for this one guys just a quick one to show you how you can set up some basic functionality or automations in esp home itself without needing home assistance you may not even want to connect this device to home assistant and it'll still function and automate the way you want it to automate like i said if you're setting this up and you're using automations on your esp device itself please make sure that when you're setting up automations in Home Assistant that it doesn't conflict with the automations in your device as it can, can cause a lot of headaches or troubleshooting trying to figure out why this device is seemingly have a mind of its own when it's actually an automation that you've previously set up on the device itself. This is more for very basic automations like a switch or triggering for a specific temperature and then setting up your more advanced automations within Home Assistant itself. But with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day.